everyone, my name is Andrew Hess, and today I wanted to go over how to work on those PDF templates again. About two years ago, uh, let's see, two years ago, I started creating videos on using HTML for our Power Apps. And I was just thinking, all that HTML that we're writing, all that HTML that we're doing, we can make beautiful PDFs out of them. And let's create some PDFs using those HTML skills. So the first thing we want to do in Power Apps is turn on that PDF feature. We're going to go to settings and I believe it's an upcoming and this may change in the future. Let's see, is it an experimental? Right here, PDF function. We want to make sure to turn this PDF function on. All right, so I'm going to turn that PDF function on. And on this screen right now, all I have is like a basic gallery and I threw some data in there from SharePoint. So it's just a gallery reading from SharePoint. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new screen, but the screen is going to be of this portrait print. When I print a PDF, I like it to be the portrait size, not the landscape size. So I'm going to do the portrait print. All right, so we have a nice uh, screen here. It gives me that good look that I like. I'm going to get rid of this print button. I really don't want the print button. That's not something I want. I want to create my own PDF function. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to insert this HTML control. HTML text, it is of classic type. And what I want to do is I'm going to create a button on my first screen. So a button. And all this button is going to do is navigate me to my second screen. So navigate, screen two, and you know, you can do a transition if you want. Um, normally I go with fade. So this button, this one is going to print PDF, but it's actually going to take us to the next screen. So when we click on it, it takes us to the next screen. We have our HTML here. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do in HTML is I'm going to create a table. So let's just keep this simple and, you know, start off simple. Table, border equals one, width equals 100%. All right, so we have a table. Let's just start super simple. Now, let me open this up for us so we can make sure we can see. I'm gonna build out my top header bar of my HTML table. So I have a few columns in there and I'm just gonna say TH and that just means table header. So the first one is task name and I'm just gonna say TH. And the, the next one is TH project name slash th. So I'm just doing table headers across. Owner. Impact with the th first. Th probability. And finally, score. Now let's see if we can take a look at that so far. So I'm just gonna go ahead and close it right now. Let's take a look at it, let's pull this down. So you notice I have a nice uh, table here. It looks like we have one problem. Let's figure out what's going on there. So it looks like I'm missing a bracket. I'm gonna leave that in here. You know, you, these are things that you're gonna to have to work out. I'm missing a bracket right there. So as soon as I add that bracket, I kind of fixed everything up. Now we can see that I have my table and it's matching my gallery on the first screen. So this is literally the same gallery, except for I said task, task name. Now what we wanna do is we wanna loop through the values inside the table. So I'm gonna do my next ampersand, and I, I love to keep it neat like that. All I'm gonna say is concatenate. Uh, what do I wanna concat? The gallery, the gallery. The gallery one of all items. And what do we wanna concatenate by? We wanna concatenate by the TR, and TD, and then now just my column name. So let's see, title, let's see, I forgot my double quotes. Let's put my double quotes in here, title. So we wanna concatenate by the title, and then I'm gonna close my TD. So let's see, close TD, and let's kinda of take a look at that so far. We forgot the ampersand. Just take a look at that so far. Oh, that looks great, right? So now we're gonna start on the next um, 
next column, all right? And that's going to be project name. All right, it's kind of building out there again. All I'm going to do is copy paste this here. Copy paste with my ampersand. And the next column is owner. We've got to do our ampersand owner dot display name. All right, it's looking good to me. And I'm going to copy paste this with the ampersand this time. And the next one is impact. And let's see, we need our TD ampersand. And the next one was probability. And the last one finally is score. And then we just want to finally close off our TD record. There we go. So now we have this nice beautiful table of all of our items that were in the gallery. Now let's say we had a ton of items in there, right? So we can easily just lower the font size and make it even smaller. You know, with the PDF function, one of the downsides is you can only really print one page. As soon as you try and print two pages, uh, it kind of messes up. So right now with the PDF function today, 2024, it's April. You can only print one page, but look at that. That's gonna look beautiful when we print, right? And when I say print, I mean, we're just gonna print a PDF and save it into SharePoint. I prefer to save my documents into SharePoint just because there's version history, there's all kinds of things that SharePoint can do for you with documents. So now, in order to print to SharePoint and save the PDF file, I normally create a Power Automate to do this. So I'm gonna insert a button I'm gonna put that here. Now, for the area that I want to print to PDF, I normally create a container. So I'm gonna insert a container, just a normal container, a normal container here. I'm gonna fill up the space and I'm gonna take my HTML text and I'm gonna put it inside my container. Okay, so my HTML text is inside my container. I can give it all the space if I want to we have a nice container. And this button is going to save. Save PDF. Maybe we want to change the first screen, um, print PDF, that's fine. Save PDF. So now I'm going to run Power Automate off of this. So I'm going to come over here to the left side. I'm going to create a new flow. Now, right now, if you create a Power Automate uh, through Power Apps, it is all classic. So this may change in the future. Right now, I am in classic Power Automate. It's not giving me that new look and feel, but I'm fine with it. Now, one of the questions I had was, you know, how do you use V2? V2 is very simple. You just add the inputs that you want to pull in. So for me, there's two inputs that I want to pull in. And the two inputs that I want to pull in is my file name. So it's a text. We're going to say it's file name, and then the next one is actually the file content. And then next what I want to do is I want to create the file. Now you can create the file in OneDrive. Let's, um, I always do SharePoint. That's just me, but I'm going to create file. But there's other options that you can do. So just create file in SharePoint. Where do we want to put it? I'm going to go to my SharePoint list that I've been using, and that is the task list. And I believe we're going to put it in the document, just the regular shared documents. Now the file name, the file name is going to be our name. And then make sure to put in .pdf. You need that PDF uh, ending there in order for it to recognize that it's a PDF. File content is just file content. That's all there is to it. So I'm just going to save. We probably wanted to rename our flow. So let me go back into it. This is a common mistake that I make a lot of times is in the top left, you can rename your flow and it makes it easier to call upon it. And let's say print to PDF. So renaming your flow, it is helpful here because we're gonna use that exact um, flow name in our Power App. Okay, so now on the on select of our save PDF button, on the on select, we're going to call our flow and that's why we renamed it print to PDF and it kind of gives you the IntelliSense. We're going to do dot run 
And this is the name of our document. So we can call it anything we want. We can give it a title, but we're just going to say my document today. And then we're going to say and we'll, we'll put a space in here and now. Now the reason I put the date in there is because it gives us a unique ID. If I wanted to overwrite the document every time, I would not put now in there and I just overwrite the document. So now that we have that, oh, I went so fast, the IntelliSense helped me out. I'm just going to do comma and it kind of gave me the next line, which is file. Now I'm just going to space this out here because I like to be able to see it how I prefer to see it. And that's file, a squiggly, and the name, and this, is, this name is not important. We're not going to use this. We're not going to use .pdf and then comma content bytes so we are going to use this this is very important this is the next column here content bytes and you have to capitalize that b the content bytes is pdf of what what do we want to print the container container one that's what we made the container here and then we're just going to have an ending squiggly ending squiggly and it ending parentheses and that's our entire flow and on select command so now when I press play and click save to PDF, it's now running that flow. We can go to SharePoint, check out the document library. There is a new document here. Right here you can see the date. You can see the date and the unique ID with the now and it kind of formats the date in there. So when we open that up and we have our nice PDF, we now have a beautiful form in there with all our gallery items. So we've kind of, you know, added that into our PDF. Let's make this even better. All right, so another question that I had from one of you is, you know, how do you add a signature? Let's just do this simply. Let's just add a signature to our container. So we want a pin input. I'm gonna insert a pin input. It's kind of big up here. We'll minimize this here. Let's make sure it's our container too. All right, so we have a pin input. Let's just drop an image in here, so image or a media image. Let's just drop it right in here. And what is it going to be equal to? It's going to be equal to our pin input. So this is our pin input one dot image. All it is is just the image. So if we sign our name, we sign our name. Now we can just print straight up. Now we have the signature in our PDF. You would think, oh, that's so difficult. How difficult is it to just print straight to PDF? So let's go to our SharePoint document library. So my new document right here, my new one, just open it right up, I have my PDF, give it a few seconds to load. Now we have a signature in our PDF already. I literally just got someone's signature. So imagine if you did this on someone's phone and they just use their finger to sign it. They can sign this straight from their phone and you can print it out on a PDF today. So that was another question that came up was, you know, how do you pull in a signature? And to me, too easy. It's way too easy to pull into a, a signature into your PDF. So since we have a, a signature in it, it's just as easy to pull in a image. So let's see, of type media, image. There's no issue with just dragging and dropping an image in here. Now you could have an image in your library and then pull it into your document. And what's really nice that happened within the last, uh, I would say a couple weeks. So what's new for me is actually Power Apps now added in this little purple bar. Now it is big and bulky, but it's fine. I'll deal with it. But what's really cool is when you edit, you have stock images. So when we pull in stock images, you have to think as a company, right? Do you have the right to use this image? And the great thing is, is that this is a subset of the creative content library. That means that as a Microsoft 365 subscriber, you have access to use these images. They are stock images and it is legal to use these images. So I'm just gonna pick the flower insert, pull the flower right in. Now all I have to do is save as PDF. And I have a new PDF. Let's go back to SharePoint. We'll go to my document library, refresh. I have my new document here. And it should have my image, my signature, and also the table. But let's go one more. There's one really cool thing that I saw. And we're going to do edit and we're going to do stock images again. But what I really like is the cutout people. So let's say we had a cutout person. 
But now what do we do on top of that? On top of that, we can pull in a line item, right? So let's say insert text label. We'll pull in a text label and we'll just say our gallery dot selected. Gallery one dot selected dot uh, title. So now we have, and you really can't see that white background there, or at least I can't on my screen. But what's really neat is now I can click save, save PDF. And now we have that person holding the document in there. And I'm sure you can make it even better than what I did in a few seconds. We're going to refresh. And when we open our PDF, uh, it should be loading. Now we actually have the girl holding our gallery line item that we selected. Isn't that really neat uh, that we selected and we highlighted it? And now it's print to PDF. And then we can just print this and we have it saved in our SharePoint library. So if we go back, this is now saved in my SharePoint library. So I'm sure you can kind of make this perfect if you wanted to. Like we could make this the exact, try and make it the exact, you know, folder here. We could add a, a border on it. Try and get it to be exact. Make this actually a little bit thicker border. And we could center this. So now it looks like she's holding that line item. Isn't that really neat? I hope this was helpful. Think about all the possibilities. I know all of you can come up with better ideas than me. Uh, the stock images is a really neat feature. We can actually print the stock images straight to uh, a PDF. We can save it in SharePoint. We have our nice table. Uh, think about all the things that we can do with HTML. If you can do it with HTML and Power Apps, you can print it to a PDF in HTML. No issue there. You have your signature. Maybe you wanted uh, her to hold the signature. You know, there's all kinds of, so let's, let's do that. Let's just, uh, now this person is holding your signature. You've now signed this document. Uh, just think about all the things you could do. So you can make all kinds of templates with Power Apps, Power Automate. You can get signatures. It's a little too easy to get a signature and pull it into a PDF. And all of this, the great thing is, it can be done with no premium licenses. No premium licenses. You can print out a wonderful PDF just like this. So thank you all for watching. My name is Andrew Hess. I'll see you next week.